tells us every decision we make goes in and out of the giant constellation and this constellation is the sunship. So those thoughts and decisions that you make every day for the person that you think you are and the people you think are in your life, you know, the, the little close constellation of friends, that's a very limited perspective of, of what the whole universe is. And that your mind is really the whole universe. So whatever you believe about yourself, you believe about the world, puts the limits on consciousness. And that's why scientists say you perceive only a tiny little strip of what, everything that's going on. If you've seen the movie What the Belief, you know it's just the, the tiniest little strip of perception is what you perceive because the decisions you're making are for the whole universe, but you just think you're making them for a very small few. And it doesn't work that way. God didn't create you to play tiny. And God created you vast. So another way to think of it is in the workbook where Jesus says, everything you think and say and do teaches all the universe. Everything that you think and say and do, teaches all the universe. We didn't get that from mom and dad. Just finish your sandwich with no dessert. <laughs> you know, it seems very small when you think that there's just, we have a very small realm of influence. And the reason that the mind is so afraid of this vast universal perspective is because it still thinks that separation is possible. It's afraid, the mind that's sleeping is afraid of thoughts because it thinks, what if I miscreate with those thoughts? What if I could bring destruction? I mean, initially when people start studying metaphysics and they're told that everything that they perceive is a reflection of their mind, they'll say, so you mean Nazi Germany was a reflection of my mind? And Saddam Hussein or weather conditions, tsunamis, hurricanes, so on and so forth. The entire cosmos is a reflection of mind, and that's why there's a fear around the power of thinking. It's like if I could, if I had that much power, what if I could miscreate? That's the terror in the mind. And through the process that we worked on today, where you start to realize Underneath your attack thoughts and underneath your, your gossips and your, your private thoughts, you have real thoughts, thoughts that you think with God, loving thoughts. And that really all we are truly, truly, truly capable of is love. We never could stray. We never actually had the power to break apart from the Creator, to make something up different, to make up duality. And that's where this is all heading. It's just asking you to release those meaningless thoughts. And as you do, you can see how loving thoughts just come through you so naturally and easily until finally you're convinced that there's only love. There's always only been love. There never was anything else. It was impossible to miscreate. The reason why we feel that way is because we're the only creature on earth that's capable of complex thinking. Because the animals don't feel that way, and the trees don't feel that way. It's, it's only human beings that feel that way. And I think that's because God has put a spirit inside of us, but He's also given us our form and our mind. And that's why we think that way, because we're, 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 we're capable of thinking one thing and another thing, good or bad. Would you say that? Or? Well, the ego is where the complexity comes in, so the spirit's just helping us rinse. We've been talking all day about rinsing and washing away. So it's just really rinse, rinse, rinse. Through the rinse cycle, <laughs> as many times as necessary. Really. 